The first step in the record making process is to cut a lacquer, which is the basis for all the discs which will be pressed. We're going to talk a little bit about um, test cuts, which is what we uh, typically do when we're going to cut the master. We'll physically cut test cuts on a uh, separate physical lacquer um, due to the inability to play the real master after it's done. So generally we have, this is a 14 inch lacquer, which is typically used for 12 inch production, but in this case we're, we're cutting a little differently than you would normally. So um, as Clint mentioned earlier, the vacuum process, um, not only does it pull the excess material to chip away, it also sucks the lacquer down to this platform. Um, your typical groove is about two one thousandths of an inch in terms of width. So preci precision is key in this case, um, just to make sure that there's no bumping or any issues going when we go to make the cut. Um, so this, this here helps uh, to keep the lacquer uh, down on the platform while it's spinning. Um, here we start the motor and in this case um, there are different uh, boxes that uh, dictate what RPM we're working with. So currently I have uh, under here they're called programmer boxes. Uh, we're using the 33 RPM box currently and it's set up for a 12 inch um, which is what I was working on prior. So, um, so over here with the pitch and depth system is where we kind of determine the spacing of of the grooves on the disc. Um, different program length dictates different um, how close the grooves are. If you have a shorter side, you might be able to space the grooves out further along. Um, and if you have a longer running side, you might have to cram them all together. We'll uh, turn our helium on here just to help pull the cutter head down a little bit, make sure that's working okay. And then in this case, I will manually move the uh, go over here because there's a little bit of a clean spot on the lacquer. Um, and we will manually drop the cutter head. So now, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> so now we are uh, officially cutting. The uh, cutter head is down, and for all intents and purposes, we are cutting. So if I start the music here, you'll hear that start to play. And over here, um, if you look at the amplifier racks, um, this bottom meter here is showing the amperage, um, so in other words, the electricity that is being pulled through the amplifier. And um, as Clint mentioned earlier, a lot of the high-end information, trouble information, tends to pull up a lot more current through the, uh, through the amps. So um, as we're speaking right now, what you're hearing right now is what is being cut through this. And we'll check that out in a little bit and listen back to it. So this little hose here is supplying the helium into the cutter head, so allowing it to cool down. When the audio is applied to the cutter head, it gives us an analogous or analog recreation of the waveform. So when you put a playback stylus in it on your record player, you hear music. Before that happens, though, Holly and his team have to ship the lacquers to an electroplating facility, which will spray the shiny disc with silver. They put that sprayed lacquer in a tank with nickel nuggets in a bath and the uh, nickel is attracted to that plate since all of that nickel went into the grooves when you pull it off you have raised surfaces. It looks like a disc that instead of having a grooved surface has a spiral of thousands of stalactites ready to be pressed into soft vinyl. That's the stamper that gets shipped to a pressing plant. One of those plants is in Cleveland. Vince Slusars opened Gotta Groove Records in 2008. Every day they load labels into their presses along with PVC vinyl pellets that are a special formulation that spreads evenly so adjacent grooves won't kiss, which causes skips. One pound of the pellets makes about three records. You're loading the PVC into what's called a hopper. That hopper feeds into an extruder. An extruder basically heats up the vinyl and melts it. But essentially what it looks like is a hockey puck or a biscuit. The labels get put on that, it comes forward in the press, it gets pressed, and then it gets dropped on the stack drain, and you have a record. For Vince Lusars, it's not just about the sound, but also the experience. When you invite somebody over to look at your record collection, you're telling them something about yourself personally. When you invite them over to look at your hard drive filled with 100,000 songs, uh, it's not as meaningful. 